In today's video, we're going to be comparing two unique and full of character breeds, the Pog and the English Bulldog. Welcome back to the Fenrir Pog Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload of the Fenrir Pug Show. So let's dive into today's video and we'll take a look at the key similarities and differences between these two distinctive breeds. The origin of the pug dates back over 2000 years ago in China. They were believed to be related to the Tibetan mastiff. They were favourites amongst Chinese emperors and lived in luxurious accommodation. Pugs were closely held treasures and the only way an outsider could acquire one is if they were gifted. Although the breed is over 2,000 years old, it took until the late 16th century and early 17th century for them to make it out of China and the Far East and start finding their way around the world. They started to appear in European countries thanks to Dutch traders and they quickly became a favourite of European royalty. In Holland, they became the official dog of the House of Orange after reportedly saving the life of William, Prince of Orange. In France, both Marie Antoinette and Josephine Bonaparte owned pugs. They have a rich history in English royal families as well. Most famously, Queen Victoria had many pugs and she also bred them. They made their way to the United States after the Civil War and were first recognised by the American Kennel Club in 1885. The English Bulldog, on the other hand, descended from ancient Mastiff-type dogs and was developed entirely in England. The very first mention of this breed was in the 1500s, where the dog was used in bull baiting, which was where the dog would grab onto the bull's nose and roughly shake it, which was thought to tenderise the bull's meat. The early bulldogs were much taller and heavier than the bulldogs that we have today. They were bred specifically for the bull baiting sport, with wide mouths, powerful jaws and a high tolerance for pain. After several years of controversy surrounding the sport, in 1835 bull baiting was outlawed in England and because at the time bulldogs were not seen as companions, there was a concern surrounding the consequences for the breed. However, many people admired the bulldog's incredible strength and persistence, so decided to save the breed through breeding them to have a sweet and gentle temperament instead of a tenacious and aggressive character that they were first bred to have. Breeders selected the dogs that had a more relaxed temperament for breeding and were able to turn the once aggressive breed into a gentle and affectionate breed. The pug is a small and sturdy dog with a barrel-like appearance. They have relatively short legs and are known for their wide chest and flattened face. They're known for their deep wrinkles on their face and forehead. They also have a tail that has a natural curl which may be one loop or two. Another distinguishing feature of the pug's appearance is the thumbprint. While this is not seen on every pug, this is a smudge on the back of the forehead. A pug has four basic colours, fawn, silver, apricot and black. Not all colours are recognised by different kennel clubs. Where the UK Kennel Club recognises all four, the American Kennel Club only recognises fawn and black. Both male and females weigh between 14 and 18 pounds. On average, they're 10 to 14 inches tall at the shoulders as well. Hey guys, a really quick message and I just wanted to let you know because we get a lot of questions about you wanting to see more videos of me and the team training dogs, real life sessions, our consultation work, puppy training through to behaviour modification and we have a whole dedicated channel for that called Fenrir Canine Training. There'll be a link in the description box below and if you want to come and follow our journey of working hands on with dogs and watching live sessions of how we go from teaching basic stuff with puppies all the way through to extreme behaviour modification modification that's over on the Fenrir canine training channel. I'm sure you'll love it and I can't wait to see you over there as well. The English Bulldog is larger and heavier, weighing in at around 50 pounds and measuring up to 15 inches at the shoulder. Females are usually smaller and lighter. Bulldogs have a short, straight and smooth coat which is generally very glossy in texture. They have heavy wrinkles covering their head and two loose folds on the throat known as a doulap. English Bulldogs can be a variety of colours including red, brindle, all of the brindles, solid white, solid red, fawn, fallow and piebald. If you're looking for a dog to hunt, guard or retrieve, the pug is not for you. Pugs were bred to be companion dogs. The pug craves affection and is most happy when curled upon your lap. But the pug is not just a lap dog. They are a playful and comical breed that enjoys living it up and delighting their owner with their silly antics. 
Their temperament is affected by a number of factors, including training and socialisation. Pugs with nice temperaments are curious and playful, willing to approach people and be held by them. Like every dog, the pug needs early socialisation, exposure to as many different people, sights, sounds and experiences from the earliest moment possible. Socialisation helps ensure that your pug puppy grows up to be a well-rounded dog. Personality-wise, pugs are happy and affectionate, loyal and charming, playful and mischievous. They are a very intelligent breed but can also be very stubborn which makes training difficult but not impossible. While pugs can be good watchdogs, they aren't known for excessive barking or yapping. If trained and well socialised, they get along well with other animals and children. They are a small, quiet breed and they're relatively inactive when indoors. English Bulldogs also find a lot of enjoyment in playing with their human companion, particularly with games like Fetch. Although it's important to be aware of how the short noses of a Bulldog can affect how much they can play at one time. They're known to suffer with breathing problems due to the physical build of their jaws and snouts, so don't tend to be as bouncy as the pug and do favour a more relaxed lifestyle. However, they are playful pups. The English Bulldog is very happy to cuddle up with you on the sofa and will happily laze around. There is something to be aware of though, as English Bulldogs can very easily put weight on and will happily be lazy dogs if they're allowed to be. It's super important to find a balance for this loving breed in terms of exercise, playtime, sleeping and just general lazing around. English Bulldogs are highly renowned for their determination and character, but are also incredibly gentle and loyal, making them really good with kids. Although they can sometimes be quite boisterous when playing, this is so important to be aware of if you have young children that may accidentally get hurt. Pugs are known for their love of children and also make great playmates for kids. Due to their robust nature, they can handle playtime even when it gets a little rough. But it's essential to do proper training and early socialisation in order for them to know how they should behave. And it's also crucial to teach your kids how to behave around any dogs. It's important to always supervise playtime between your children and your dog to make sure that both parties know how they should behave with each other. Both the Pug and the English Bulldog are incredibly popular breeds, both ranking within the top 30 kennel club breeds for popularity. Although both are relatively small compared to other breeds, they have larger than life personalities and with plenty of early socialisation and consistent training can make wonderful additions to any home. Finding the best breed for you, your family and your lifestyle is really important and I definitely suggest doing plenty of research before bringing a canine companion into your home. Knowing more about your chosen breed will definitely help you in caring for them and giving them a happy and healthy life. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on the comments section below. And don't forget, if you are new here, to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated pug videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Pug Show.